Alright, so I wanted to take that tutorial that I just made about the radar material here and uh, show you basically how to how to turn it into a material that you can use for an actual mesh. Um, this is just something I threw together. It's not very not very polished, but um, anyways, because I just wanted to show you, it, it, it's also going to be kind of a lesson on masking, and and you'll see what I mean in a minute here. All right, so this is the material. This is how it ended up looking. All right. So just to start out with here is I to get this uh, the shininess around the circle here. It's just all, all I did was plugged in a uh, a normal map. And then the whole thing has a specular map also. And, uh, okay, so this is all the same as it was, right? You've got your tangent curve going along, and then it plugs into the, uh, pl okay, multiplies by the textures and everything, and that's how you get the ring. Now, the thing is, we actually want the ring only in the top corner, right? Because that's how I laid out my mesh, so that this uh, this one polygon here, would just be in the top corner, right? Okay, so the first thing we did then was we plugged in a texture coordinate to show us how to tile it, right? So texture coordinate, uh, so that's horizontal and vertical tiling, right? So that's why we have four of these, four of both of these. All right, and then down here we wanted this sweeper to just be in the corner there, so I actually made a new texture for that one that's almost the same texture. I just uh, scaled it and then brought it up to the corner and made it exactly one-fourth the size. So that way I knew easily to change the center of rotation uh, up to 0.75 and 0.25. I don't know. Anyways, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, but, okay. Now the thing is, now we have uh, the sweepers in the right place, but we've got four of those big circles. So what I did there instead is I plugged it into a mask and I just said, hey, you know what? Anywhere that is black here for the alpha, anywhere that's black, it's going to go up to this A value, which is 1. Anywhere where it's white, which is a value of 1, it's going to go to this B value, which is the circular thing, right? So that's how it's going to cancel out everything out here and just keep the stuff that's in here. And I just plugged that straight into emissive. I decided that I wanted to change how that was set up a little bit. So that's emissive, so it's going to go in the dark. And then for the uh, the paint on the outside, I figured the paint wouldn't glow. It would just be painted on the outside of the screen. Because uh, I, I wanted this to be more like an old-fashioned radar. So what I did for this end was the same thing. Texture coordinate, 2 and 2, so it's tiled twice. And then I wh what I did for this one, though, is I said, in this circle here where the radar is going to be, that's where I want it to go to the B value of this. So it's just going to keep this upper right uh, circle here. And then the rest of it is going to go to my texture sample, which is the texture that I made for this uh, for this uh, whole radar machine, right? So it's going to be like the metal and the buttons and everything. And I plug that into diffuse, so that's that's actually lit. And that's all that there is to it. See, so it's still driven by the exact same math. It's still set up um, basically the same way. It's just a simple matter of saying you know, we only want this part though. <laughs> so, it it comes down to smart uh, UV layout on your material because like I say, I had it so the whole front face was this first corner. Now I could have done it so that it tiled more heavily. I could have said 4x4 four four or anything else and then had it smaller. Um, it's just this is the way I decided to do it because I figured for a radar mesh, uh, that's going to be a pretty big, um, uh, like a pretty significant uh, piece of the mesh, if you know what I mean. Like, when you look at it, what you want to see is the radar part more than anything else. So I figured it, it could spare the extra space by making it bigger, and most of these uh, are layered on top of each other and everything, so it reuses space there also. So, including the buttons, of course. So. Alright, and that's all there is to this one. Um, so hopefully you learned a little bit about masks. I'll just go over that one more time real quick. Um... You could have done this a little bit differently also. Like, instead, I could have said multiply this by this so it would only keep the part in the white and get rid of the part in the black, right? And then add it to uh, 
1 minus this times this, which would have been the opposite. It would have turned the black white and made the white black and only kept this outside part. And then I could have added them together instead. But this was just a simple way to combine it in one step so that I only keep the part that's in white for this part and then only keep the parts in black for this part up here. So there you go. I, in fact, I can turn this off so you can see. And that's all that it would have been. But like I say, plugging this into emissive here, you need to keep that. So there you go, and it's the same thing down here. So congratulations, uh, you just figured out how to add a radar to your your mesh. But hopefully, what you really learned is um, how to use masks and and a little bit about how that warp works.